Hey everyone, we're moving on to question 3.3. So, let's just read the scenario and then jump into the questions. So it says, as part of the renovations, Tabisa will also be changing the look of two different windows near the walkway. The glass panes of, window of the window frame will be decorated with glass beads glued onto the glass pane as indicated in the picture. So it's basically going to make it a bit decorative, okay? Now there's two different types of window panes. There's these small ones that go over there, and there's these larger ones that go over there, okay? It's important to note that the smaller ones are squares and that the larger ones are rectangles, okay? So now I've kind of understand what he's doing, but let's just jump into the questions and make sure that we understand the scenario thoroughly. Remember I said sometimes we don't understand the scenario, but the questions actually help us, okay? So it says, the first question, 3.3.1, says, determine in centimeters the length of the frame of the large window. Okay, so the length is actually this bit here, right? It says the length of the frame, not the length of the pane. It's quite important because the length of the pane, right, would only be one little of these sides, right? The frame is the whole way along, right? So we know that the length of the frame is 890 millimeters, but we've been asked to determine it in centimeters. We know that 10 millimeters equals one centimeter, right? So we say 890 divided by 10, which gives us 89 centimeters. Now remember, check we can do here. When moving from a small measurement to a larger um, measurement, we know that the number should decrease. So we went from 890 to 89 centimeters, which we would expect because we are going to a, we're moving to a larger measurement. Okay. So that's just like an easy question to sort of um, ease us into the scenario. Then it says, calculate the perimeter of one small window pane. Now, what I always say to my students is perimeter is like there's a little ant, right? And this little ant walks the whole way around the edges of a shape. Okay, that's what perimeter is. So in this case, we know that the small window pane is a square, right? That's given. And that each side is 8,5 centimeters. So if the ant was going to walk round this pane, it would walk 8,5 centimeters that way, 8,5 centimeters there, 8,5 centimeters there, and 8,5 centimeters to return to where she started. I'm making a little girl ant. Okay, so it says calculate the perimeter of one small window pane. So, the perimeter of one small window pane is going to be 18,5 plus 18,5 plus 18,5 plus 18,5, which is the same as 18,5 times 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. If you don't understand that, you don't have to put that step in. You can just add those in your calculator and you'll get to the answer. Okay, 18.5. So it is 74 centimeters for that little ant to walk around the perimeter of that window pane. Okay, let's now move on to 3.3.3, which is quite a tricky question to actually get our heads around. Okay, so let me just quickly label it and then we can jump in. Okay, it says the radius of one glass bead is 1,8 centimeters. Determine how many glass beads will fit along the length of one small window pane. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to draw a bead, okay? So there's my bead. The reason we know it's a circle is because when we see the word radius, radius always refers to a circle. Radius doesn't refer to other shapes, right? It refers to a circle or a sphere, okay? Or a cylinder, anything that's got a circle in it, right? So we know that the radius starts from the middle and goes to one side, right? That's the radius. So radius equals 1,85 centimeters. Now, the diameter is a little bit different. Diameter goes the whole way across, right? So this diameter, I'm gonna put that little D there, right? This diameter equals two times 1,85 centimeters, right? So it equals 3.7 centimeters, okay? Because it runs from one side to the other side. Now, if we just wanna visualize what they're asking us, so I'm just gonna draw a nice tile there. It's definitely not to shape, I mean to scale. I'm not a very good drawer, but these are all equal. Okay, so what they're saying is we're gonna put these beads along 
the edge of of one of these tiles, right? Oh, I'm smudging here, right? And we need to know how many of these beads are going to go across. Now, what we want is we basically want the length across each of these beads to get the total number of beads that can go along one of the sides. If I use the radius, right, I'm only counting for half of the distance. Do you see that? Right? I'm not accounting for the whole distance from one side of the bead to the other side of the bead because the radius only goes from the center of the bead to one side. So we know that the length of one side is 18.5 centimeters. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to say that 18.5 and we're going to divide it by the diameter value. Okay? And the reason we do it by the diameter value is because the diameter takes the length from one side of the bead to another side of the bead. And that is how we're going to calculate how many beads are sitting along the length of one of the sides of this pane. If you put that into your calculator, you will see that it is five beads. Okay, now let's just do a little, little check, a little by the by check. Okay. So what I'm going to say here is I'm saying, okay, what if I had actually done the radius? So what if I hadn't done what I'd done over here with, with the diameter as the, the denominator and instead I had put in the radius, right? So let's say I said 18.5 divided by 1.85, right? And that's the radius, okay? That would have given me 10 beads, right? And the reason it would have given me 10 beads is because I have basically said that the radius is the diameter of this bead, right? I'm saying that these beads are much smaller than the actual beads that are indicated, right? Because I haven't used the correct measure. As I said here, I only take half of the distance into consideration. Therefore, do you see, because I only took half of the distance, half of the diameter into consideration, it now says I need double the beads right? And that's incorrect. And that's why it's very important to read the questions. Okay, that's right. That's wrong. Okay. So let's move to 3.3.4. Okay. And 3.3.4 seems a bit tricky, but it's actually not too bad. It's all about ratios, right? All about ratios. Remember, ratios are just saying, when I get something, when I get one of something, you get a certain amount of something else. That's literally what a ratio is. Okay. So here it says the total width of two small window panes, right, equals three quarters of the width of one large window pane. So let's just quickly draw that because it's not always that easy to understand what is going on. Okay, so I've basically split this into four, right? One, two, three, four. And I'm saying three quarters of this, right, is two small window panes. So this is a large window pane and this is a small window pane. Okay. Now these two small window panes make up three quarters of the length of this larger window pane. Okay. So before we do anything, let's calculate what is the length of these two small window panes, right? If I have Hey, let me try to get another color highlighter. Perfect. Here's a blue one. What is this length? That's what I want to work out first. Okay. So from our diagram, we know that the length of one window pane is 18,5. So we know that 18.5 times 2, which is 37 centimeters, you can check me on your calculator if you do not believe, um, it's 37 centimeters, right? That whole length there. Okay, 37 centimeters. But we know that that's only three quarters of the length of the pink, right? The pink is longer than the blue, right? So I'm going to write a little ratio. So I'm saying 37 centimeters is three quarters of the pink. Okay, 37 centimeters equals three quarters of the pink. But what I want to actually know is what is one quarter, right? Because we know that if I can find out what one quarter is, I can times that by four to get one, right? Which gives me the length of the pink. So if I can find out what a quarter is, I just times it by four and it gives me the total length of the pink, okay? 
So, what do we have to do to three quarters to get it to be a quarter? Right? We have to divide it by three. You can check me on your calculator, right? We want to get it to a quarter. The way we know we have to divide it by three is you can say this. You can say three over four divided by one over four. Because that then tells you what you will need to divide three quarters by in order to get one quarter. It says three. Now, with a ratio, what we do to the one side, we have to do to the other side. So we have to say 37 over 3. Okay, if I put that into my calculator, 37 divided by 3 gives me 12.33 recurring. Recurring means repeated centimeters. Okay, so now what I have, right, is I have what one quarter equals. Okay, so now I know that that's three quarters, but this length here is four quarters, right? And four over four equals one, right? So it's a full length, right? So all I have to do is take that 12,33 and times it by four to get the length of my pink bit. So I'm just gonna do it over here. Obviously on, on when you do your test, you must make sure that you go into the next page, right? But I just, for the sake of space, and so that you can see the diagram as well as my answer, I'm going to say 12,33 recurring, right? That just means I'm keeping it in my calculator, times 4. Remember, we do not round off till we get to the end, right? That's what it told us in the instructions. So this is 49.33 centimeters. Here, I round off because... Right, they told us to round off our final amounts. Three, yeah, is less than four, so we know that we round down. If it was greater, if it was five or bigger, then we would round up. But here it's smaller, right? So the final answer is this pink length is 49.33 centimeters, okay? Now let's just do a little check. Is that longer than 37 centimeters? Yes, it is. So it confirms what we would have thought, that the pink is longer than the blue and that is our final answer okay I hope that was helpful these things you can do you must just make sure that you go through them quite methodically because sometimes it's not intuitively obvious the first time I looked at this I was like what's that about and now I figured it out okay so I hope that was helpful that's question three done and now we're gonna move on to question 